Om Shanti. <clears throat> and good evening. You all know this word Om Shanti. It's really quite famous now. And of course, you know that <clears throat> Om Shanti means I am a soul at peace. Is that right? Is everyone a soul at peace? <clears throat> so this evening we're going to look at the healing power of happiness. So what do you think? <clears throat> the purpose of life is happiness, yes? Is that right? So do we have it? happiness. Yes? No? A little bit? My sister was very beautifully describing the happy Filipinos. I just take this, my voice is funny. <clears throat> so happiness on the face, we can do that. Smile, say cheese, get a photo. But we are, I think, looking at something much, much deeper, yes? So um, I'd like you to consider three words that I feel are going to really help with the cultivation and development of happiness. And one of them is caring. You know, if you care or if somebody cares for you, yeah? That is going to make you feel better, yeah? <clears throat> so caring. And the other word is um, communication. Many people feel that they do not receive the communication they would like to have from family members, from colleagues, from different sources. We, we want to understand each other. We want to get information, the information we think we need to have. And when we are not receiving communication as we would like, then it also takes away our happiness. Do you feel that? Yeah. So caring, communication, and the third one, I think, very important is community. Community. Um, I know in the Philippines, the family is really important, yes? And beyond the family actually is the community. <clears throat> so I would like us to really take a good look at caring, communication, and community to carry us beyond the perhaps limited area where we feel that we can extend our trust. Because I think it's very normal to feel that you can trust a family member, yeah? Or you can, <clears throat> you can cause a family member to do what you want, yes? But then when it goes beyond the family, then it's something different. And I think that creating family is very important but also extremely important to take it further and, and really develop community. And I don't know how far you think community can be developed, but potentially I feel that it can uh, go as far as the entire 
world, the community of humanity, uh, because humanity is, has got all kinds of different people in it. And I think one of the things that takes away our happiness is when we see someone as other. You know, there is a word for it that is uh, originally an Indian word, but a word that is quite part of the English language, which is pariah, someone who is other, not us, other. Division, uh, a feeling of us and them. Uh, this, I think, is something that has really contributed to our loss of happiness. So, I've been talking about the healing power of happiness in a number of different places and taking up different aspects of it. So, I will just, in a capsule, give you some of the points that I have been talking about because they are also very relevant, but taking us forward to really working with these three C's of caring, communication, and uh, community. <clears throat> so the first thing that is a basic ingredient of uh, happiness is to know that happiness is a byproduct of pure action. <clears throat> In the Brahma Kumari's World Spiritual University, we study about what it means to be a human being and what it feels like to be a human being who enjoys your full strength, your full power, your full component of the spiritual qualities. And the um, mantra that I told you in the beginning, Om Shanti, I am a peaceful soul, means that we need to know a little bit more about what a soul is and what a soul is composed of, because of course you have soul, you have body. And your body is basically composed of uh, air, earth, fire, water, and ether, the elements of matter. But your soul, everybody has a soul, right? The soul is made of purity, peace, power, love, and bliss, which are not physical, I see. And the happiness is something that is actually experienced inside the soul. And within the soul is the mind. And the mind is that aspect of consciousness which has the capacity to experience feelings. And normally you think of your feelings as being in your heart, which is where the body resonates with feeling, but the origin of feelings is really your mind. And the human soul uh, interfaces with the material world through our sense organs and the objects of sense perception. So you, what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you touch, these are the uh, instruments whereby the soul experiences the world. You see, and and happiness is also something that the soul experiences through the mind. You see, because happiness, the feeling of happiness, actually occurs in your mind, and. We uh, have the experience of temporary happiness that we like very much, which is happiness that comes 
through the positive stimulation of our sense organs. So we like beauty, uh, we like tasty things, uh, we like money, uh, we like to feel good, we like presents, it's Christmas time so we will receive a lot of presents, we'll give a lot of presents and um, this uh, experience of happiness through a material objects is temporary see. and so our happiness that comes from these things is um, for a while and then we also get unhappiness and so the problem I think for us in this respect is that we are materialistic souls and a materialistic soul craves uh, sense pleasure you see people places objects which give us pleasure and there's this a law of spirituality which most people don't know but which I will let you know and that is that um, you know when you take pleasure and you take happiness from things people and places it sets in motion a system whereby you are obligated to also take sorrow and most people don't know this but it's worthwhile knowing because it means that we need to rethink our relationship with the pleasure and the happiness that we take from physical objects, physical places and physical people. Um, so we get caught up in this flow, this um, equilibrium of happiness and sorrow, of failure and success of victory and defeat. These pairs of opposites are a situation that we are in and which we don't really like. Uh, because we like the happiness part but we don't like the sorrow part. And we would like to have only happiness but no sorrow. Is that right? So the problem is that if you don't know this law that if you go to one side you have to go to the other side you will never really come out of it and so this is what we learn in spiritual study and spiritual practice is that there is another kind of happiness which is called super sensory happiness that means happiness that comes from a different source, not from physical people, physical places and physical objects. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Now um, there are three ingredients that are needed for happiness and one of them is money. Do you have enough money? I usually ask people this and normally people say no. Do you also feel, no, don't have enough? Oh yes, you have enough. Or you don't want to say. But usually it's not quite enough, yeah? Not enough? Yes. <laughs> so we need enough. How much is enough? Basically we have to distinguish between what we need and then greed. How do you know if we have um, taken or bought or accepted or received uh, something out of greed is, is if we don't use it, right? 
Have you got in your mind's eye the possessions you have in your flat or your apartment or your house? You know, and there's quite a few of them that you have, but you are never going to use. You never used yet. So we, what should we do with those is we should give them away. Right? Or we should throw them away. If they're too nice to throw away, then we must give them. You see? So, um, yeah, things. Um, another element of happiness that's very important, along with money, is you need to have good health. Is it right? If your body is in pain or if you have an illness or there's some danger of death uh, occurring or you have some disability or chronic pain or something like this, it, it really takes away your happiness. Is that right? And this is why we have a very good um, pharmaceuticals industry and medical industry because people do not want to have bad health. So health is needed. Wealth and health and the other thing that's also very important for happiness is uh, good relationships. Do you have good relationships? Good relationship with your spouse, good relationship with your parents, good relationship with your children, good relationship with your colleagues, good relationship with your neighbors, you know, all the various different people that you come in contact with, or that you live with, that you work with, if you have good relationship, that really helps to um, make you feel that life is good and I am happy. But when the relationships are bad or they go wrong, then you experience suffering, you experience loss of happiness. So these three ingredients of uh, health and wealth and good relationships are very important. And there are certain things that we can do in order to secure these three things which are very good to know. So that is also there. I've been talking a fair bit about that. Then a third thing that um, I think takes away one's happiness is sin. Yeah. Uh, sin is an interesting concept. You know, normally people don't like it if I talk about sin, but I will just for a few seconds um, because um, I think that what we've learned in the spiritual practice of the Brahma Kumaris is how to deal with sin in a productive way, which is quite helpful. So first of all, um, there's three kinds of sins, and usually people know two of them, but not the third one. But uh, the one that mostly everybody knows, because you hear about it from birth, is one should not do things which are harmful to other people, right? You should not hurt people, you should not steal from people, all this sort of thing, not to do a, a sin of commission. Then the other kind of sin is a sin of omission. That means when you don't do what you're supposed to do, that's a sin of omission. So whenever we do something wrong, then um, it actually takes away our happiness and it causes us to feel a little bad, a little guilty or the conscience bites, something like this. But the third kind of sin is not so well known and that is um, the sin of taking sorrow. You see. And uh, a lot of people really do not know that taking sorrow is a sin and why I call it a sin is because it does the same damage to the self as happens when you give sorrow to somebody or when you fail to do what you're supposed to do. So this um, uh, act of taking sorrow is equally damaging to the self. And so 
what is taking sorrow. For example, if somebody says something very unpleasant to you, which happens, right? So then you take it in and you'll feel bad, you see. And so if, if somebody does something bad to you, it's their mistake. But then if you take it in, and that is your mistake, you see. So uh, this a lot of people don't know, but um, it's going to go an enormous distance to securing happiness when we learn the technique of not taking sorrow. You see, because there's plenty of people out there who will give you a lot of practice. So you can <laughs> try it out, you see. So, um, uh, for example, if, if somebody says something about you behind your back, it will always get back to you, right? So then you will feel bad about that. Or if somebody says something unpleasant or unkind to your face, well, that's also very um, disturbing. And um, very often you will, you know, think about that person that you have given me a lot of sorrow and you have given me trouble and you are a bad person and I feel bad and you remember it a lot. So all of these different ways of taking sorrow actually are the self doing harm to the self in addition to the harm that somebody else wanted to do. So a good technique is to um, very much be in your consciousness, in your stage, what we call the stage of self-respect or the seat of self-respect or the seat of self-honor. So it's very, very important to know that you're an extremely nice person, very good, very intelligent, very interesting, very correct. And if somebody tells you you're not, you just say, you know, I'm a really nice person. And if you don't think so, you have a problem. You see? Because when you turn it around like that and you don't take it in, you know, it's much better. You see, because there are many people who feel it's a good idea to hurt you for one reason or another. Or sometimes they were reactive or whatever, they had a bad day, something. But never take it personally. I mean, you know that already, not to take things personally, but take it further, not take any sorrow, you know. And, and we have no practice to do that because our culture says, you know, take as much sorrow as you can. And uh, that may be not such a good message. Uh, we should not take sorrow. Because you can't take sorrow and be happy at the same time. So what we're looking for is not just happiness, but also we're looking at the healing power of happiness. So happiness is um, a byproduct of pure action. So what kind of pure action? Charity. Philanthropy. I think um, one of the people who's a very good example of somebody who thought that materialism is it and I'm going to you know, make large amount of money is probably Bill Gates, who was a millionaire at the age of 30 and a billionaire at the age of 31. And so, you know, in the pursuit of happiness through material gain. But it really wasn't until he and his wife started philanthropy and really um, using their wealth for the benefit of other people that they actually started to experience happiness. 
So this is a very important thing to know that um, happiness is very short-lived when it comes from receiving from people. But we don't want short-lived happiness. I think we want long-term, sustainable, lifelong happiness, you know, through all the ups and downs of life and everything, but to be able to have sustained, um, good quality happiness in, in every domain of life. And so for this, we need to be able to be wealthy, not just only with physical money, but the essential original qualities of the soul that I mentioned earlier, purity, peace, power, love, and bliss, you know, this is our wealth. But um, sometimes if you're not that wealthy, you can't give that much. You need wealth to be able to give. And so our levels mostly are levels of love and peace and personal power are quite low, would you say? You know, because uh, you probably experienced in your life that there are people in your life who would like you to love them more than you do. And they may complain that, well, you don't love me enough. Or you love somebody else more than me. You see? And um, sometimes when people are very demanding of your love through your attention, your time, all this, uh, you feel uh, you have to protect yourself from these demands, you know, because you just do not have what they want and you have to protect yourself because you're getting depleted. Do you experience this? And so partly it's because everybody's very, very hungry for these things <clears throat> because mostly everyone is running on empty in terms of these spiritual qualities, the love, the peace, you know, how quickly do you get angry under provocation? Quite quickly, right? That means amount of uh, sort of residual peace within is little. So you have a short fuse and you get irritated easily because not that much peace, you know. How many times do you say, well, I would if I could, but I can't? Which has to do with just not having enough inner power to be able to do those things that we would like to be able to do, but that we can't. Why can't we? Because we just do not have the strength, you know? And so this is really why the spiritual practice is quite relevant because it is the way that we refill ourselves and restore ourselves to our original wealth, inner wealth, you see. And of course the source of these qualities is a spiritual source because these are spiritual qualities and the spiritual qualities are in the soul and when somebody wants love from you, <clears throat> or you need power, it's not coming from the supermarket. You, you get it from a different place, you see. And if you don't have it, you have to be able to get it. And so we do this through meditation. <clears throat> and we, we saw a number of meditative slides and afterwards Sister Rajini is going to take us into a meditation so that you can really learn how to resource yourself from the higher power, the Supreme Being, so that you can actually um, learn and practice to fill and stay full so that you're able to give. Because when you give, this is when you receive, and you receive long term, you see. And this is really what happiness is all about, causing 
through your gift, causing someone's life to be better. Um, to, to give a person courage, to give a person patience, to give a person a feeling that they have value and they're important and that they are loved and lovable, you know, all these kinds of things, to give people an education, to give people health care, to give people the things that wealth can buy, but more than anything, to enable a person to feel their own spiritual worth. You see, these are acts of charity which cause a flow, a kind of return flow of blessings, you see. And this creates happiness. I'd like to introduce you to the idea of karma. So karma is simply quite now an international word that means action. And so you could have good action, you could have bad action, you could have neutral action, you could have boring action. And, you know, action is, could be thought, an act of mind, could be verbal, something you speak or something you write, or it could be a deed, you see. So any of these thoughts, words, or actions, if what you do is of benefit, you see, to the world or to others, um, then you see it creates a return. And so basically it's a form of investment. And it's an investment which um, doesn't have any risk really attached to it because whatever you do which is of benefit to yourself and of benefit to <clears throat> people around you or people very far away, this will cause a return in many different forms, you see. Because all the various things that are needed in the world, you start providing different ones of those, you become enriched in those ways, you see. And this creates happiness. Happiness is a feeling that nourishes you. And one of the things that we have to be careful about is worry, you see, because worry is a very common ailment. Most people worry. You worry about tomorrow. You worry about your family. You worry about money. You worry about health. You worry about all sorts of things. And worry does not change anything. It just simply um, drains all of your spiritual energy so that you go again to a state of emptiness which could then make you depressed, which then requires medicine and things like this. <clears throat> so you have to be very, very free from worry. Now going back to caring, communication and community which I think are very important goals uh, to have. Um, the first person you have to care for is yourself. First person. Now, in our culture, very often we disregard the self because we don't want somebody to think that we're selfish. And we will maybe create an imbalance by paying attention to others and disregarding the self. And when we do that, we become depleted and we also become a little bit irresponsible because we are having a duty to take care of ourselves. It's very important to remember this. So the first person to look after is the self. And then it extends from there to your family, your community, and beyond. So I think that the um, caring, the act of caring is an act of love. And so the inner uh, quality of love 
is a very, very subtle quality. Love is an act of giving, you see. Whether you're giving to yourself or you're giving to someone, this is what love is. And we need to fill ourselves with love. And we won't do that unless we love ourselves, you see. But of course the source of love is a d divine source. And so when you are focusing your mind, tuning your mind to the Supreme Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved, Teacher, Guide, um, you start to receive love from that source. And you can again create a flow of love because when you're receiving love, you see, you don't just keep it in, but you receive it and you let it flow out. And it needs to be able to go as far as the end of the earth. And so I think what we need to do in order to really uh, take happiness is to make sure that our love doesn't get blocked anywhere because especially when we think of certain people as other we we'll say I love these people but not those people you see because this is to block and uh, so also why would we uh, love everybody because there's some nice people some not so nice people some good people some not so good people and all this type of thing because we judge the different behaviors as good and bad, right and wrong, and all this. But behind people's actions, you know, why does a person do a bad action? A person does a bad action because they're spiritually depleted, because they're weak. If you analyze yourself, any time if you do a bad action, it's because you're tired or you're frustrated or you're something, depleted on some level and then a bad action happens, they say, oh, I'm terribly sorry, I didn't mean that. But it's connected with this um, state of being depleted and very often people are traumatized. There's very traumatic things happen to people in life and when a soul is traumatized, it's damaged, it's injured, then um, the uh, flow of pure qualities is um, contaminated and then bad actions occur. So it's not because somebody's bad, it's because they're weak or because they're injured, you see. So there's no point in going around punishing people because it makes it worse. So we have to really learn about love, you see, which is also a healing power. But I think that looking at happiness as a healing power, you see, happiness which is a feeling uh, of being sustained by this return flow of pure actions. And also, you know, we need to have good connection with the Supreme Being, good connection with other people, and good connection with nature, you see. So our actions, our karma, with all of these three needs to be very correct, very accurate, so that we experience this return in our relationship with the divine with humanity and with matter, nature, I see. So does, does this make sense to you? So I think the thing that um, is going to really make a difference is um, to extend the caring beyond where it normally stops. It needs to go further. Uh, so that the sense of community continues to increase because wherever we put a stop uh, it's a limitation and, and it causes a blockage, it causes the, the happiness quotient to 
reduce or stop altogether. So we need to do that. And communication, you know, real clear communication. Uh, I think, I don't know, do you talk to God? Talking to God is a very good idea. I see. I mean, I presume you're aware that God listens to everything you think, everything you say, uh, because God is always with us, is it not? So, I mean, that communication, to continue to have that communication, very, very good, you know. And, and the communication with um, people, I see, to, to um, think good things about people, uh, to feel, to send good wishes to people, and good feelings to people is very good. And um, usually we stop doing that when we get irritated with them. So it's quite a good practice to try really to deal with our irritations quickly so that we can get over it and extend pure feelings uh, because otherwise it leads to a block in our relationship and the communication becomes negative. So communing also with nature is a very good thing. Uh, one of the problems that we have in the world today is that nature is fed up with humanity, is it? Uh, because <laughs> humanity has been pretty awful to nature which is so, you know, beneficial, which gives us food and housing and transportation and whatever necessary, but we have somewhat wrecked it. And so there's a comeback from that. This is also karma. And this also causes unhappiness. Any type of natural calamity creates unhappiness. Anyway, so these are a few points of happiness that you can think about and consider uh, and see, especially the one about not taking sorrow. I think that's a very important one, not taking sorrow. And then the other point about extending the limits of what you consider to be your community as far as you possibly can. So it goes beyond your religion, beyond your race, beyond your national boundaries to really include all of humanity because we are, after all, a family of humanity. So I will stop there and thank you very, very much.